What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I am going to give you guys a bit of a tutorial video. Uh, basically explain the whole setup menu, um, how to use it, how to best set up your car for different types of racetracks. So basically I'm going to be going through three different types of racetrack you want to set up for. Uh, low downforce, medium downforce and high downforce. Um, we'll go through that as we go. But uh, yeah, this take this as uh, a base, a starter setup for whether it be career mode, whether it be time trial, online, league racing. I feel like this can apply pretty much across the board. Um, but bear in mind, this will be probably better used in like an actual race scenario. Um, whereas like time trial, you could probably go more aggressive than what I am doing on uh, this setup. So we're going to start off. I'm going to explain every facet of the setups. Um, what you what works, what doesn't work, what you need if you're lacking a certain uh, particular thing. So fuel load, um, I think that's pretty explanatory. You, you don't need to really go into that. Um, aerodynamics. So the baseline is six six. Bear in mind the the stock setup this year seems to be better than what it is in previous games, but you can still approve upon it uh, with the setups, and that's the whole reason why we're making this video, isn't it? So. So, uh, when it comes to low downforce setups, um, I would go for something like 2-4 wings. And this would apply for circuits like Monza, Bahrain, uh, Spa. And it's just so you can maximize the straights, um, getting the best acceleration, the best top speed. Really helps in overtaking other cars. Um, and uh, as well with the aerodynamics, this is really the only thing you should change um, from circuit to circuit it will vary whereas every other area of the setup doesn't really change from setup to set from track to track shall i say um, you can also go like one four wings if you want if you feel like the car is a little bit um, too oversteery with some of the other presets i'll give you later um, if you want the car to be a little bit more stable one four wings is the best way to go in terms of medium levels of downforce we're looking at four six Five, seven, something like that. This is your Silverstones, your Melbournes, your, uh, I'd say, Suzuka, tracks like that. Um, Abu Dhabi. This is the mid-range. So most tracks will fit under like this kind of range of downforce. Now bear in mind that as well, I'm making this video on launch day, the day that F1 2018 comes out. Of course, over time, setups will get better. So keep an eye out on the channel for updated setups. And uh, just watch, I don't know, just watch my league racing videos, some of my career mode videos. You'll see the uh, the setup adapt over time. But at this point, uh, in the game's life cycle, this will do fine. Uh, moving on to high downforce. So you're getting to your Monaco's, you're getting to your Singapore's, Hungary, for example. You want to be running a lot more downforce uh, so you can get through the corners. Uh, you'll create a lot more drag, you'll be a lot slower on the straights, but... Uh, the, ki the kind of tracks that we're going to don't really have long tr uh, straights. You're just going to be maximizing the corners. So something like, uh, I don't know, se anywhere from 7, 9 to 9, 11. Uh, and you could even push this further if you really want to, say it like Monaco. Um, but it all depends on whether the car can handle it. it, it with the ballast settings that we run, um, it's best to leave the, the difference between the front and the rear wing at two. Um, some, tra some tracks you might have to lower the front wing a little bit to, to three clicks away so that you don't get tremendous oversteer and, and spin out at certain times. But that's the downforce. This, that's the, the thing that will change from circuit to circuit. Um, but once you get a hang of things, once you get used to it and you adjust... Uh, and play around with the setup a little bit more, this will come more naturally to you. Whereas the other aspects of the setup uh, are a little bit more fixed and set in their ways. You can pretty much leave this at most circuits and it'll be fine. Transmission. So, how this works. Um, I don't really touch the off-throttle all too much. Um, I usually leave it at 75, but when you have differential um, on, this affects the behavior of the car when you are accelerating, when you've got the power down. Um, if you move it lower, it'll kind of make the power delivery a little bit smoother at lower speeds. Um, so it, it'll help in traction. It may help a little bit, a little bit with tire wear on the rears. But the main tool that this is actually used for is actually making the car a little bit more stable at high speed. So 
um, if you have this low, uh, it'll actually feel a little bit more oversteery at high speed. So just be aware of that. That can be a bit of an issue. But when we run with high amounts of ballast, when we want to be more aggressive with the downforce, uh, we turn up the differential on to closer to 100%. Um, it makes the car a little bit more snappy at low speed, so it's easier to kind of spin out. But if you can deal with that, it kind of makes the car a little bit more stable at high speed when you're changing direction and just going through prolonged corners. I, it, it's one of those things that I, I don't fully grasp it, but it, it kind of makes sense when I, when I drive it and when I use it. And this was a big tool of what people were using on 2017. Most, most of the time, you're leaving it on 100. For the rain, for example, you want to probably move this down to 85 just to kind of get the best of both worlds. Moving on to suspension. Um, this year, it seems like the combination of rear camber, uh, camber all the way to the left and toe all the way to the right gives you the best response gives you the most amount of grip at high speed. This seems to be the winning combination for most circuits. Um, the only exception that I would have to this suspension geometry is maybe like a, a Baku or a Monza, something with really long straights, uh, where you could probably move some of these settings closer to the middle, not sure which ones, and you'd get probably better straight line speed. But as a general setup, I just recommend leaving it uh, how it is right now. All the way to the left for the camber and all the way to the right for the toe and you should be fine. Moving on to the suspension now which is another pretty important facet of the setups for F1 cars. Um, suspension, we normally for the front have it uh, higher than what we do on the rear. That's just to give the nose a bit of uh, pointiness, uh, make sure it's nice and responsive. Um, when you turn the wheel you know exactly that the front end is going to bite and um, you have the grip to carry speed into corners. For the rear suspension, we normally move this a little bit lower. Um, when I started off this game, I had this a little bit too high and I was struggling quite a lot for just the rear end and, and traction. Um, but I've since learned that moving this down lower, so it's kind of around three or four, um, with the other changes that we made to the setup, really complements the rear end a little bit more and keeps it a bit more in check. So. Having the rear suspension at 4 gives it a little bit of responsiveness and uh, a little bit of snappiness, but at the same time it allows you to keep the, uh, the power planted and you don't lose the back end in prolonged corners so much. Anti-roll bars, to be honest, I don't really see too much um, benefit in changing these. Most of the time people leave this pretty much the same. They'll leave it, uh, I don't know, around the 5 to 8 region. Uh, normally, again, the front being a little bit higher than the rear. I think on this game, 8.6 is a good starting point, and I just leave it at that. For the ride height, this is actually a pretty big thing as well that you can change on F1 2017, for example. A lot of uh, time trial specialists would uh, move the ride height to 7.5, 7.4, um, and this would make the car very responsive and very uh, oversteery, would help you know, get the, the nose into the corner and help rotate it really well. Um, but at some tracks, this is was just an absolute nightmare. Like at Singapore, for example, you don't want to be um, too aggressive with that. But F1 2018, story's a little bit different now. Um, I feel like in terms of ride height, you actually run with less on the front now and uh, higher on the rear and give it actual rake, just like in real life. So I think at the moment we leave it at 5.6. Um, seems to be... A nice compromise at the moment, but I imagine that down the line there is going to be improvements to be made to that. Moving on to the braking now. This one is actually really, really important. Um, the brake bias, absolutely huge in uh, obtaining lap time. So a big thing that the you know competitive drivers have been using over the last few years is moving the brake bias towards the rear. Um, and this helps rotate the car when you are approaching a corner. So... In order to be quick, you need to trail brake as you approach the apex and slowly, slowly lift off the brake. And by having a, a rearwards biased um, brake setting, it, it just allows you to, to kind of get better turn in. And um, it, it makes such a difference in the amount of lap time you can make up. So, uh, obviously further to the right, uh, the faster you can technically be, but also the more unstable it'll be in the braking zone. For me, and this is all personal preference, the, the sweet spot for me is 52% to 54%. Sometimes in the rain, I'll move it up to 56% so that the rear end isn't sliding up too much. 
but yeah, the, my, my normal setting is 54, but this is all personal preference and it just depends on how comfortable you are with the back end slowly easing out as you come to a, uh, an apex. For brake pressure, normally leave it at 75, but I feel like on F1 2018 you can get away with a little bit more pressure. Um, so anywhere from 75 to 82 would be fine. Obviously, the higher brake pressure you have, the later and harder you can brake into a into a corner. But the offset is um, higher front tire wear, so just be aware of that. A lot of league races leave it at 75, and they seem to have a good balance there. You can still brake really late, um, and you kind of get the best of both worlds with that. Moving on to the tires now, uh, the tire pressures, shall I say? Normally, you don't play around with this all too much, but I find like the best setting for longer races is to lower the pressures by one or two clicks and normally have the front tire pressures just a little bit higher um, than the rears. And that's because the rears will naturally overheat more because they're the ones doing all the work. They're the ones that are inducing the wheel spin. So you don't want to be leaving that too high. When it comes to like time trial and maybe qualifying setups, you can afford to run with higher um, tire pressures. But um, bear in mind that in the race, it's not the most ideal thing in the world. So um, I'd normally leave it right in the middle and then just lower the rear tire pressure by one. And that's a pretty good setting across most tracks. And now finally, we move on to the weight distribution. Uh, on 2017, this was the holy grail of finding lap time. You would move the ballast all the way to the rear at 11 and uh, you would get the absolute best rotation of the car. You would be able to carry so much speed into corners and you could chuck off all of the front downforce to mitigate the, uh, all the balance being on the rear. But on F1 2018, David Greco and his handling team have done a really good job of trying to mitigate this OP aspect of the setup. And so now the maximum at the moment you can kind of get away with is eight ballast. And that's what I run. So that's why the aerodynamics is at four six or two clicks lower than the rear wing. And that is to counteract the, the ballast um, being quite rearwards so that we can just help with that rotation of the car, helping to um, get around the corner. So with this, if you've not really played around with these kind of aggressive setups before, you might want to start off at maybe seven and then work your way up towards eight and maybe even nine um, if, you, if we can find other workarounds in other parts of the setup to make it more stable. But I'd put it at eight and um, see how you go with that. If it's too oversteery, move it down to seven, like I said, but eight should be the sweet spot and that should be a really good setup for you as a starting off point for your career mode, for time trials, uh, for doing online races, this should be the perfect way to start. And uh, this is what I've been using. This is my base setup for F1 2018. I'm pretty quick with it at the moment, um, but as always, there are always improvements to be made. Um, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more F1 2018 content. Um, if there's any other tips, tricks you want to know about F1 2018, be sure to put it in the comments and I'll probably make a video about it uh, in the near future. But thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you next time.